so let's continue the previous topic we have started the data analysis techniques so in this we have the descriptive analysis so the descriptive analysis takes into account the historical data key performance indicators and describes the performance based on a chosen benchmark it takes into account past trends and how they might influence future performance okay then we have dispersion analysis dispersion in the area onto which a data set is spread this technique allows data analysts to determine the variability of the factors under study then we have regression analysis this technique works by modeling the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables okay so sometimes there can be one dependent and one independent variable sometimes there can be um, two independent variables and one dependent variable like this it goes on so a regression model can be linear multiple logistic ridge nonlinear life data and more so you will study the regression analysis so the different types of regression analysis can be simple linear regression multiple linear regression okay non linear regression logistic regression and so on then we have factor analysis this technique helps to determine if there exists any relationship between a set of variables so in this process it reveals other factors or variables that describe the patterns in the relationship among the original variables factor analysis leaps forward into useful clustering and classification procedures okay so this is factor analysis this technique helps to determine if there exists any relationship between a set of variables so in this process it reveals other factors or variables that describe the patterns in the relationship among original variables then we have discriminant analysis it is a classification technique in data mining it identifies the different points on different groups based on variable measurements in simple terms it identifies what makes two groups different from one another this helps to identify new items so then we have time series analysis in this kind of analysis measurements are spanned across time which gives us a collection of organized data known as time series okay this is a very important topic so it measures the measurements across time then we have so next we have techniques based on artificial intelligence and machine learning so before it was techniques based on mathematics and statistics now we have techniques based on artificial intelligence and machine learning so first we need to understand what is artificial neural networks so a neural network is a biologically inspired programming paradigm that presents a brain metaphor for processing information so everybody knows our brain is a complex network of neurons so the artificial neural network is inspired from the working structure of our brain an artificial neural network is a system that changes its structure based on information that flows through the network the artificial neural network can accept noisy data and are highly accurate they can be considered highly dependable in business classification and forecasting applications then we have decision trees as the name stands it's a tree shaped model that represents a classification or regression models it divides a data in smaller subsets simultaneously 
developing into a related decision tree. So if you want to enroll for the machine learning course, then you will understand what is this decision trees, then regression analysis and all, okay? So UPLATS has a very good portfolio on the courses regarding machine learning, then Python, advanced Python, and uh, deep learning, data science, and many more, all right? The evolutionary programming. This technique combines the different types of data analysis using evolutionary algorithms. It's a domain independent technique which can explore ample search space and manages attribute interaction very efficiently. Then we have fuzzy logic. It's a data analysis technique based on probability, which helps in handling the uncertainties in data mining techniques. Okay, so these are the techniques based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Then we have techniques based on visualization and graphs. So in this we have column chart, bar chart, which are used to present numerical differences between categories. The column chart takes to the height of the columns to reflect the differences. Then we have line chart, which is used to represent the change of data over a continuous interval of time. Then we have area chart. This concept is based on the line chart. It additionally fills the area between the polyline and the axis with color, thus representing better trend information. Then we have pie chart. It is used to represent the proportion of different classifications. It is only suitable for only one series of data. However, it can be made multi-layered. Then we have funnel chart, we have word cloud chart, then we have Gantt chart, which shows the actual timing and the progress of activity in comparison to the requirements. Then we have radar chart used to compare multiple quantized charts. It represents which variables in the data have higher values and which have lower values. Then we have scatter plot. It shows the distribution of variables in the form of points over the rectangular coordinate system. The distribution of the data points can reveal the correlation between the variables. Then we have bubble chart. It is a variation of the scatter plot. Then we have gauge. It's a kind of materialized chart. Here the scale represents the metric and the pointer represents the dimension. Then we have frame diagram, which is a visual representation of the hierarchy in the form of an inter inverted tree structure. Then we have rectangular tree diagram. This technique is used to present hierarchical relationships, but at the same level. It makes efficient use of space and represents the proportion represented by each rectangular area. Then we have map. In the map, we have regional maps, point map, flow map, and heat map. The heat map represents the weight of each point in a geographic area. The color here represents the density. Then we have regional map, which uses color to represent value distribution over the map partition. The point map represents the geographical distribution of data in the form of points on a geographical background, right? Then the flow map represents the relationship between an inflow area and an outflow area. So this is about techniques based on visualization and graphs. So this is all about the different types of graphs and maps, okay? So we have so many types of visualization techniques, different types of charts, different types of maps, okay? Then finally, let's move on to the data analysis tools. 
So in the data analysis tools, there are several data analysis tools available in the market, each with its own set of functions. The selection of tools should always be based on the type of analysis performed and the type of data worked. So here's a list of a few compelling tools for data analysis. The first one we have is Excel. It has a variety of compelling features and with additional plugins installed, it can handle a massive amount of data. So if you have data that does not come near the significant data margin, then Excel can be a very versatile tool for data analysis. Then we have Tableau. It falls under the BI tool category, which is a business intelligence tool category made for the sole purpose of data analysis. The essence of Tableau is the pivot table and pivot chart and works towards representing data in the most user-friendly way. It additionally has a data cleaning feature along with brilliant analytical functions. Then we have Power BI. This tool initially started as a plugin for Excel, but later on detached from it to develop in one of the most data analytics tools. It comes in three versions. It has a free version, pro version, and premium version. Its Power Pivot and DAX language can implement sophisticated advanced analytics similar to writing Excel formulas. Then we have the fine report, okay, which comes with a straightforward drag and drop operations, which helps to design various styles of reports and builds a data decision analysis system. Then we have R and Python. These are the programming languages which are very powerful and flexible. R is the best for statistical analysis, such as normal distribution, cluster classification algorithms, and regression analysis. It also performs individual predictive analysis like customer behavior, all right, and many more. It also involves concepts of machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. Then finally, we have SAS. It is a programming language for data analysis and data manipulation, which can easily access data from any source. SAS has introduced a broad set of customer profiling products for web, social media, and marketing analytics. It can predict their behaviors, manage, and optimize communications. So finally, we will conclude this lecture. So this is a complete beginner guide about what is data analysis. Data analysis is the key to any business, whether it is a startup. So whether it's starting up a new venture, making marketing decisions, continuing, continuing with a particular course of action or going for a complete shutdown. So the inferences and statistical probabilities calculated from data analysis help to base the most critical decisions by ruling out all human bias. Different analytical tools have overlapping functions and different limitations, but they are also complementary tools. Before choosing a data analytical tool, it is essential to take into account the scope of work, infrastructure limitations, economic feasibility, and the final report to be prepared. All right. So hope this was helpful for you. Have few more times of the preparation. So just look at this lecture a few more times. If you are preparing for any interview or if you want to create a career, then data analysis. All right. So any doubts you can mail us. Thank you.